G'day, I'm Josh and I'm 26. And I'm Phoebe, I'm 24. And this is Sonia, our bearded dragon, she's one year old. And we're all living together on our 35 foot floating home in a bloom. So last week we took you on our first voyage as novice sailors from our home port of Ballina to Tweed Heads. A painstakingly slow passage of 14 hours due to light winds and just our sheer lack of experience. But thankfully, since quitting our nine to fives, we're not in a rush. We've been drinking up the splendor of this beautiful town with clear water and forgiving weather patterns. After two years of working on our boat in Ballina to get her ready for full-time cruising, we thought that our first morning in Tweed would be nothing but maxo relaxo. But I'm sure anyone who's spent time on a sailboat is thinking, you fools, there is always something that needs to be done. So Josh and I woke up probably about an hour ago, which was 12 hours sleep and we really needed it. And it still feels like we could sleep some more. But we've got a bit of mould in the boat at the moment. You can see it all up there on the hull. We've also got mould on the freezer as well. It's kind of accumulating from all of that condensation. So we're gonna take this off today and give it a really good scrub, lay it in the sun. Josh has just sprayed the pillows that we were sitting on yesterday in the cockpit, cause they're really moldy. But this is our beautiful anchorage in Tweed Heads. This is in Terranora Creek. The tide's low at the moment, but it's still super beautiful. It's got a really gorgeous green color to it. Tide will be high in a couple of hours. Josh is just tidying up everything. Actually, are you spraying the fruit basket? Yeah. Yeah. Spraying the fruit basket. It's got some nasty fruit juices on it. I think because we hang our wet um, dishcloth. Yeah. Sometimes we hang like our wet clothes and stuff up there to because dry. yeah, because the only thing that we hang our clothes on is the helm, uh, just in case anything falls overboard. So we often use that. So we'll probably have to rig up a, another kind of situation. We've got my sister coming to visit to have lunch with us. Um, but yeah. Definitely a naps on the cards again today. Yeah. <laughs> and a haircut. We had a fellow the other day called Josh. <laughs> Jesus Christ Superstar. <laughs> Which I don't know who that is. Which he doesn't know who that is, but it's fitting. We're actually gonna set up the shade sail now because it's already so hot and it's like nine o'clock in the morning. This is our brand spanking new stack pack with two independent awnings either side. We got this idea from Troy and Pascal of Free Range Sailing. Obviously this is a system that we haven't ever had to use so we designed it off what we thought would look good and be functional also for catching water. Something I love about this awning is that we can have one side set up or the other side or both sides. Uh, just makes things easy if you want to walk down one side of the boat or whatever. Okay, so white mold symptoms, uh, respiratory issues, sneezing, watering eyes, dizziness, asthma attacks, fever. Um, it's not toxic. It just causes allergy-like symptoms, but black mold is toxic and we got both. <laughs> <laughs> hey, hey, hey. <laughs> I think this might be half of the issue with how much liquid there is escaping the door and it's freezing and causing it to run less efficiently because it's freezing all up into here so we'll have to f figure out what that is nice <clears throat> in his undies too what a man <laughs> whoa you sneaky sucker oh wow yeah look at all the black mold white mold down there too so i've given the freezer a spray <clears throat> We're giving the freezer a spray with this solution that we got from our friend Greg. Um, it was like a mold treatment given to all of the victims of the floods in Lismore. So I'm stoked that we've got this. We've got a couple of bottles of this stored down in the hull so that we can deal with the mold in the future. What's really important to Josh and I is that we have a very limited toxic waste or you know toxic impact on the environment. So everything that we use on board, all of the soaps and solvents and everything is always organic or toxic chemical free. So I've got in this solution that Josh is going to wash the cover with, I've got heaps of clove oil to kill all the spores, pop some vinegar in there, and then I'm also going to put the Dr. Bronner's soap in there. We use this for everything. Um, this is the hemp and eucalyptus flavor, <laughs> scent. And I'm going to scrub it with this coconut scrubbing brush. This microfiber puts little microfiber plastics into the river, into the ocean. So at least if this goes in there, it's just an organic fiber. Oh, funky. So unfortunately, if you've dealt with mold before, you know that it's really hard to get the staining out, the mold staining. But as long as we get the spores dead, then that's all that matters for us. 
it doesn't matter that it's not very aesthetic to have lots of mold and stuff but i can see the color of the water like it's actually it's getting it out pretty well but isn't it true that if you only use bleach to treat mold it's still active but it's just gone white and yeah then... yeah that's what i've heard um because obviously everyone in the northern rivers has been dealing with mold since the floods but also through all the learning year season people have been complaining about mold in their house because it's so hot and rainy from what i know bleach just bleaches the mold but it doesn't kill the spores so we don't have any bleach on board anyway no The tide's coming in now. The river's looking bluer by the second. We'll have a full tide at 125 with a 1.2 meter tide. So it'll be really nice, really full, really clear. So we're gonna finish all our jobs this morning and then we're gonna go for a well-deserved dip. This is our first morning in Tweed waking up with a sense of normality. Yesterday we were feeling so unwell that we just jumped straight into the mould, but we're going to try and find a little bit of a routine. Now we're going to go over for a little bit of um, movement on the beach, but at the moment we're just importing all our footage from our first passage. It's pretty exciting. It's unreal. Um, just spending a little bit of quality time with Sonia, having a nice cup of juice and yeah a bit of a little bit of reflection and a little bit of planning on what we want our our routine to look like because um i think we'd both kind of thrive with a bit of a yeah routine. yeah to begin with when we were kind of talking about the way that we want to live while doing this i was of the opinion where i was like i just want to go with the flow babe like i don't want to i've lived my whole life by schedule so i just just want to wake up and see what the day brings but now after 
well, you know, being two days into it, I'm like, oh, I actually think that having a bit of a schedule is important, especially with all the things that we have to get done. We both have our online businesses, but then also um, getting all the footage sorted and doing our YouTube and all of that. So prioritizing other important things like our relationship and quality time and personal development. So having a bit of a schedule in day-to-day -day life is going to be vital. We also have like quite a few people that we need to see while we're in Tweed, some friends and family. So for the next week at least, we'll be definitely living by a schedule um fitting everyone in <laughs> josh was telling me yesterday that he met this fella at the floating pontoon in tweed and he told him the name of the boat obviously in a bloom and the guy steve was like oh like the nirvana song and josh came home and he was so excited to tell me that there was a nirvana song called in a bloom and so we're just about to listen to it and um it's actually called in bloom steve <laughs> Close. But I think we need to get better with our pronunciation of inner bloom because a lot of people from our generation, when you say inner bloom, they're like, oh yeah, like the river song. But anyone, I guess, a little bit older than us, they're like, oh, in the bloom, in bloom. <laughs> what did someone say? Oh, in the blue. In the blue. <laughs> so yeah, we're still gonna listen to the song now, Steve. So we'll play some jazz music over the top of it <laughs> for copyright reasons. This is Sonia's first time really experiencing boat life because for the most part when we were living in the marina Yeah, we're talking about you when we were living in the marina We didn't get a lot of well, we get the wake from the trawlers But there wasn't a lot of swell wind trap while we were living in there So getting to experience all of the the movement and motion of living on a boat and I think she's she's doing really well Look at her stance. <laughs> she's like well guys. <laughs> I don't want to freak you out, but we're moving except her little nails make her slip and slide around so we might have to get her some little booties <laughs> <laughs> some sailing shoes with white soles <laughs> Good morning. It's gonna be another stinking day today. We've come over to the public dock to do a little bit of filling up the boat of water, washing the boat down from our passage, and then I'm gonna finish up on a few little jobs that I've been working on. Um, one of which is removing the excessive sealant around the um, port lights that we replace. And then, yeah, gonna give the boat a wash down and a few other jobs. Uh, Phoebe's gone off to work on our business this morning with a friend and she's also going to be getting a few more fuels for us. We ran out of gas and metho so we're going to stock up on that before we start heading north. So, just about the best thing that can happen to me is high pressure fresh water so I can get the salt off this boat. Uh, after the passage, everything is so salty. Your feet get so salty by the time you get inside and then salt in the boat creates just like this constant moist environment. It's really unpleasant. So gonna scrub a dub dub this boat proper. Um, I love, I love covering something nice and flash and clean when I used to have my Toyota 4Runner the best thing I could do is my childhood friends was just sit around and just polish our cars till they hurt your eyes so I hope the boat resembles that after my um my efforts today but I could basically just use the sweat from my body to wash the boat it is cooking here yeah I'm gonna get into it now aesthetics have been the last thing on my priority list till this point in time but here on the bow installation from our new bow roller has left us with a bit of two-pack epoxy paint that you can see in that red color so i've just touched that up with a bit of navy and soon we'll have a white coat over the top of that so it'll look brand spanking new just woken up to the sound of crunching thought it might have been a big big fish eating the 
growth on our hull, but it's not that sort of sound. It sounds like our anchor chain is wrapped around our keel. The only way that could happen is as the tides turn, we've got tangled up in it. So, it's 3am. I can either dive on it now, which I don't have a torch. I'm only going to be able to feel my way around. Or I wait three and a half hours until it's light and then get down there. But I'm just worried whereabouts the anchor chain is actually wrapped. And if it's near any about through hull fittings because they're all poly plastic so it could take take one of them off and if that happens then the boat would start filling with water plus our transducer and stuff's down there and if it's wrapped around the keel then it's going to be taking off paint and exposing steel here's the sound now time you'll see me wearing a shirt is when it's not too hot. <laughs> All the mozzies are bad outside, which they were. I just sat up on the bow with the torch and watched the chain. Water's so clear here. Even at night with the torch, you can see down to basically the bottom. Watch the chain and where everything was going and it couldn't possibly make sense that it was going backwards around the keel or rubbing up against the boat because um, I could see it going down to the bottom. And after watching it for a little while, and waiting to hear the sound up on the bow, I found the chain was pulling over the bow roller and pulling taut in a certain direction. Our snubber, what we use to absorb the impact from the anchor to the chain to the boat, is a bit of nylon rope that will sort of stretch a little bit more rather than the chain coming straight onto the boat and, and putting all that power of the boat and the weight of the boat over the anchor winch, the windlass. When you set the snubber up onto the chain you need to have a little loop of the chain so it's actually pulling taut on the snubber not on the chain and the loop I'd left in a certain direction when the boat swung wasn't great enough so I've let a little bit more out I'm going to go and lay down now and fall asleep to the sounds of aggravated tweed locals on a Friday night I was really getting hyped up to dive on that but I really didn't want to <laughs> gonna have to get an underwater torch Good night. Got a little bit of tender work going on, redoing the lines finally that we can use to lift the boat up out of the water um, using our winch and one of the halyards. Um, so I'm replacing them. It's hot. It was raining all day yesterday, cold, and now it's hot as. So we're going to be having a line at each um, side on the transom and then one on the bow, and they will come back to the center of the boat, meet and act as a lifting point that will ideally balance the boat. Um, on the bow and stern and then we'll also use them as lines to tie the the boat off when we're alongside um good in theory my complication at the moment is the size of line that i'm using it seems a little bit too big for the hole so i'm gonna do a little trick by actually no first um because i've been burning the ends of the the line to sort of seal or the rope to seal all the fibers and strands. Now, you tape it, cut it. See how that keeps it all nice and tidy there. And I'm hoping that that'll fit through our little um, pre-punched pre hole in the boat that we're working with. Oh, it's gonna be close. <laughs> wow, that could not be closer. That's incredible. One thing I am very happy about this line though is that it's a floating line. The last um, ropes we had on there were sinking and that's quite dangerous getting wrapped around the prop if we have to jam it in reverse and we're towing the tender at any point. So these, all these lines float so they'll keep well away from the prop which is one of the most important things. Uh, fouled prop is bad news for experienced sailors, novice sailors. <laughs> so there we have it, our new painter all attached to our tender and as you can see the line floats in the water compared to our old line which is sinking and going probably to be reused once more as I'm terrible with that stuff 
and then beamed it. Now, unfortunately, we didn't get as much footage as we were hoping in Tweed, but we were grateful to have conscious time together off camera to keep things real for us. We still had a lot of admin to sort. Our last remaining material tied to land was my car, which was still in Tweed waiting to be sold. Once it was though, we set sail on our second passage to Southport with an exciting tailwind of a 10 to 15 knot southerly. Just got on to um, test a new launch pad and put the drone up to get a little bit of footage because this afternoon is cracking. I'm shampooing my hair, I've got dinner on the cook. It's just, it's beautiful. So I go to put the aircraft up and I find out that we're in a no-fly zone because of the airport. So I won't get to test this out now. But anyway, a little bit of an anticlimax, but that's all right. Well, the reason I wanted to do that was because we haven't been able to fly the drone here yet and it has just blown us away with how beautiful it's been the whole time we've been here the wildlife and the marine life in front of this nature reserve where we are is just it's just so beautiful there's egrets and ospreys and all sorts of other whoa other beautiful birds we're sad we're sad to leave here but we're looking forward to what's ahead <laughs> it's gonna be crazy it's going to be so crazy. Oh, I can't believe it. Fast light, electricity, moving lights, tranquility, bright spot. Judy, <laughs> you got it on skate. Yeah, got it on skate. What's skate? Action. <laughs> action. <laughs> the action's down here, follow me. <laughs> Joshy's at the helm, he's going to find us an anchorage for the night and I'm just going to get started on cleaning everything up from the passage. Um, nothing in the bow has fallen out of the lead cloths, which is good, bit of a spillage in the head, but yeah, no, no damages. I wonder how the lizard's doing. And she's in the panties. Stop it, you devil. Yay, thanks for being here. We're overwhelmed by how much support we've received from you and it's a real pleasure to have you aboard with us. Next week, we'll be swinging off the pick in the boating capital of Queensland. I don't know if it's the boating capital, babe. <laughs> well, it fucking felt like it. Dodging motor cruises and jet skis while still finding our own slice of paradise. And we're taking the boat out on the hard for the first time. So, yeah. Bye. See ya.